This is a test I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. The Ping G425 LS Tech against the Callaway Epic Max LS. Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. We're getting straight into it yet again today and we're gonna hit so many golf shots I'm gonna to have to keep interrupting to hit them. Not if the ball falls off like that. So while I have been so rudely interrupted by the ball falling off the tee, let me introduce the Callaway Max LS and the Ping G425 LST. Now these are both the low spin options from both Callaway and Ping this year. And I'm really excited for this test, that was really good. Really good. Now there's a couple of similarities between the Ping and the Callaway. Like I said, they are both the low spin variant, but they also both have a very similar adjustable weight in the back for that little bit of fine tuning. Because we all want that bit of fine tuning, don't we? And I tell you what guys, spoiler alert, I don't think there's gonna be much in this, but I think there might be a bit in the difference in sound and feel. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Such a better golf swing. I'm swinging a little bit better today as well, which does help if you have watched my reviews on both the Ping G425 and the Callaway Max Speed, you will know that since Christmas, which taking taken a bit of getting back into. We're not allowed out on the golf course at the minute here in the UK. However, I do have a few videos that were filmed previously, which will be coming soon. I was swinging a bit better then as well. So maybe just a bad Christmas period. Now, I have hit quite a few shots with both these clubs today already. We've got quite a few on file as it were for us to look at. And the first difference is such a striking difference. The first difference is such a striking difference in visual appeal. And I don't just mean shelf appeal. Obviously the Callaway Epic Max LS does have that vibrant green stripe running through it and the Ping G425 LST is a little bit more stealthed out with the occasional splash of silver and white. But the big difference comes when you look down at both these clubs, they look totally different. They look so different, it's actually quite scary. The Ping on top offers the turbulators and the dragonfly effect, while the Callaway offers that lovely carbon weave top. Both different technologies are both aiming for the same outcome, weight saving, weight distribution, and ultimately speed. Now the ping, the, the audio behind the ping, I said this in my review, isn't quite what I would like. It's not quite kind of deep enough. It does give you a bit more of a ping noise, mind the pun. Whereas the Callaway, because of that carbon top and because of the different materials that go into it, give you a much more solid thud style feel. Like that. Oh, that was wonderful. Wonderful. Now the big story behind the Callaway is that jailbreak AI speed frame. That's designed to offer more stability both vertically and horizontally across the face to give you more ball speed on off center hits and pretty much anywhere. And we also have flash face technology SS21 this time, which does account for a little bit of that audio feedback like I said earlier. Now, when I did test the Callaway, the standard Callaway, albeit Epic Speed out on the golf course, I must say I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed how stable it felt. I really enjoyed the sound of it, the feel of it. The big thing was the accuracy. I was really, really accurate off the tee with it. I don't know if it was kind of a purple patch of a day, but it just felt more stable. And like any comparison or review, guys, these are my personal opinions. Make sure you do get in the comments below and let me know what you guys think if you're lucky enough to have tried these yet. Is that gonna stay on that tee before I have a chance to hit it? Yes. And interestingly, that's gone very high. Interestingly, I think it's quite a good thing that these two both look entirely different, sound entirely different, feel totally different, because if the sound and felt and looked the same, the whole thing would be pointless, wouldn't it? Right, let's get one out there. Shape-wise, I do really enjoy... I always start talking just as I'm about to hit. I do really enjoy the shape of this Callaway Epic Max LS. However, however, I don't think it's quite as nice as the shape of the standard Callaway Max Speed, which 
is more of that kind of aero cyclone shape. I do think both brands have done really well in keeping the kind of traditions and keeping what makes them their own whilst making the low spin models because sometimes you see these low spin models and they're nothing like the rest of the family of drivers. They haven't done that, they've kept within what they're trying to tell or trying to do within the products. Oh, that was a really good one. That was absolutely nutted. It's going to be interesting to see which one is the lower spin variant. A lot of people think that basically low spin and high launch means long distance and bombing drives, but there is a kind of window you want to hit. You don't want to go into too lower spin or those balls start to kind of dip out the air and don't get the desired distance that you want. How many have we hit? We've hit seven shots with each. I hit some in the warm up and kept them in there because I liked them. Let's hit three more each. And then we're going to swap again, actually. We're going to swap again just so it is a mega fair test and no one can say that we kind of structured the order differently or whatever. Interestingly, you know, I've just looked down at the ping there and with all the lights in here, it almost acts as though you're out on the golf course on a sunny day. I mean, it would be wonderful, wouldn't it? And I do like the matte finish on here. It doesn't kind of glare up at you. The finish on top of the Callaway, if it's really sunny and bright, could glare up at you and be a tiny bit off-putting. I know I'm probably clutching at straws here, but you want a full comparison, that's what you're gonna get. I must say I'm not a huge fan of the old turbulators, but each to their own. Aerodynamics and all that. Nice. I do think it's important as well that you go and try different brands this year, that you don't just stick to the brand that you know, stick to the brand you've always used. There are so many good drivers out and coming out that if you are in the market for one, you're probably doing yourself a bit of a disservice if you don't go and try them all, go to a fitter that can offer you different heads, different shafts. Make it a fun day, make it an actual golf experience rather than I'm going to go and buy my new Ping driver today because that's what I've done for the last 10 years on the release day or whatever. Ping do claim that the G425 is 7% more forgiving or has 7% more inertia than the G410, which is some claim. I don't know how you'd quantify that, but it is a bold claim because that was a forgiving club anyway. That might have gone. That's the first shot I've hit in a long time. It's gone a little bit right. Should probably say as well that both the clubs have the adjustable necks, so you can change loft. The Callaway, you can change face angle a little bit as well. And the Callaway does come as stock with the Align grip on, so you can move that round whilst keeping the orientation of the grip the same, which is very, 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 very clever. Very clever. And just so you know, both clubs are set at standard nine degree, nothing doing in that regard. Right, 10 shots with the ping. Let's hit three more with the Callaway. Let's have a nice array of shots to compare. Guys, comment below, which one do you think, which one's gonna be furthest? There's not gonna be a lot in it, there never is. But which one's gonna be furthest and which one's gonna be straightest? This will be interesting. So having spent a long time now looking down at the turbulators, it's actually quite a nice change just to look down and see that Callaway arrow, that kind of fulcrum-y type shape. That for me just looks a little bit more subtle and there's a little bit less going on. Right, come on. We've left another one a bit right, but that's maintained some serious ball speed for where I've hit it off the face. And for people asking, the fade is still a work in progress, but I do feel like we're getting there a little bit. I don't know what it is, I just feel like I can go after the Callaway that a little bit more, like it just, it gives me that little bit more of a confidence booster. Right, last shot of the whole test. Nice. That is, I'm out of breath, Whew. that is a great shot to finish on. That is 10 shots hit with the Ping G425 LS Tech and 10 shots hit with the Callaway Epic Max LS. Two mouthfuls as well. How different are they? Take a look. So we'll start with the Callaway Epic Max LS. And you know what? In 10 shots, I've hit three that have gone a tiny bit left. But look how consistent that trajectory is as well, that overall ball flight. We had one that went really high. But apart from that, that kind of backs up what I was saying on the golf course, that I feel like it's more stable. I feel like the face doesn't kind of move as much. And I don't know if that's a personal thing. It probably is. But when I was out there, I definitely felt more confident in hitting fairways and obviously that's gonna have an effect on your scores, isn't it? What about the ping? So straight away, I'm quite impressed with the ping there as well. I have been, not gonna lie, I've been hitting a few shots to try and get the game back. A little bit more sporadic, a little bit more spread out, but realistically, there's no shots there that's gonna 
harm you massively. So it's gonna come down to the numbers. So the numbers we have very, very close, as I would have imagined, we have the Callaway up there at 275 carry, the Ping at 273. I do feel like that's kind of a fair assessment as well. We have club head speeds, 106.5, 104.5, resulting in ball speeds a little bit higher with the Callaway, as you can imagine. And this is the number you all wanna see, the spin rates. So the Callaway is actually spinning a little bit higher at 2.6 as opposed to the ping. I'm spinning at 2.3, so the Callaway is kind of hitting that window a little bit for me. Now I'm well aware that I could have hit way more shots. You can always hit more shots when it comes to club comparisons and club testing. I'm quite happy with the shots I've hit. I think these are two pretty good drivers head to head. Do I think the miles better than anything that was out last year? No, not particularly. Do I think the miles better than anything that was out a couple of years ago? No, not particularly. But if you're in the market for a new driver, you want to go and get fitted, both of these, have to, you have to go and try them both just to see. Personally, I do prefer the sound and the feel of the Callaway uh, and the looks actually. Although, if the Callaway did a matte finish on top without the turbulators, if I could kind of mix them both together, that would be really good. Obviously, we can't do that. Um, but yeah, the Callaway takes it for me on the sound and the feel. I just felt like, I felt like I could go after it a little bit more, which is maybe why we got a few extra miles an hour club head speed on average, and I could, be a bit more stable with it. Both of them quite good dispersion, both of them doing what they say by producing low spin, but the Callaway takes it for me. Guys, hit those comments below. Which one would you choose? Which one would you like to go and try? Would you like to go and try them both? Uh, leave us a like if you enjoyed that, and apart from that, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.